صلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم شيخ الإسلام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى he said in the 59th aspect giving the people of truth horrendous nicknames subhanallah this is a reality I mean it's happening as we speak the people of the truth they're always labeled to be really bad and they will call them names they will, they will say you're Wahhabi right they say you're either Wahhabi they call you Madkhali they call you Jami they call you uh, Neo Salafi you know all kind of name that, why do they do that yeah, yeah, you know Ikhwan why do they do that to turn the people away from the Haqq and they used to do that with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he used to give da'wah, they, what they would do, they would hire, they would hire female singers. They would hire these female singers to attract the people to the singing and to stay away from the da'wah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But that didn't work out. Didn't work out. Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He's in control. So that's what they do. Like until today, the people of falsehood they will label the people of Ahl Sunnah with names that are very, very evil and ugly. You know? They will say about them things that amazing things. Subhanallah. To, to keep the people away from the people of the Sunnah. And this is the way of the people of Jahiliyyah. They were like that, as the Sheikh mentioned here. He said, the 59th aspect given the people of the truth horrendous nicknames. They label the people of guidance with vile names, such as a Sabi, one who apostates from the truth, and al Hashawi, one without any benefit in his speech. Look at this. Look at this. The explanation from the ways of the and methods of the people of the days of ignorance is that they would scorn and ridicule the people of guidance by calling them awful and repentant. Repulsive names. So they will call them these names to turn the people away from them. To turn the people away from them. They would say, don't listen to this scholar. He is this, he is that. And they will give him names. He's a, he, they would say he is, he is takfiri. For example, he said that he deems the Muslims to be kuffar. But the reality, no. Like the people of Bid'a, they will, they will attack Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahhab. And they would say that... Uh, he doesn't like the, the family members of the Messenger of Allah. And this is a lie. This is a big lie. Or you people of the Sunnah, you, you Wahhabis, you don't implement the Sunnah. And this is the opposite. This is the opposite. Subhanallah, this is very, very strange. Very strange. The Sheikh he said, by calling them awful and repulsive names. For example, they would call them Asabiya. So the Asabi is a singular of Sabia, is someone who has extracted himself from the religion. A'udhu billah. A'udhu billah. Can you believe that? This is extreme. So, they will call the people of the truth Sabia, or ones who left the fold of the truth. A'udhu billah min dalik. They're the one. It should be the other way around. It should be the other way around. Because the truth, according to them, was that which they were already upon from disbelief and misguidance. You see? Like, for example, the grave worshippers. The grave worshippers. If you bring them the, the proven evidence, they, they will accuse you that you hate al awliya. They will say that you hate al awliya, but it's the opposite. The opposite. Because al awliya themselves, if they were alive, they would not have liked what you're doing, calling upon them beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would have loved what the people of the Sunnah are upon. They would have said, you know what? They are upon the truth, not you. You know? Because you're calling me. You're not supposed to be calling me. I'm just a human being. Why are you calling me? So, subhanallah, it's always the opposite. And the, the people, they get tested by that. The people get tested. Or one who left the fold of truth because the truth, according to them, was that which they were already upon from disbelief and misguidance. So whoever followed the messenger of Allah, 
was a sabi. Can you believe that? So if somebody is extracted from the truth, is, is taken out from the truth. Or one who abandoned their customs. Yes, their customs. Because now, you know, they follow these customs. So you bring them the, the truth and you tell them, the, the, I, have a, I have an ayah from the Quran, I have a hadith of the Messenger of Allah. They say, no, 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 no. We, this is the way we do it. This is all we're going to do. And we're going to follow our forefathers. Because this is what we know. This is the Islam that we were raised upon. And they're hard-headed. They're very hard-headed. They're very fanatic. Very fanatic to their customs, to their ways, to their traditions. They're not going to budge an inch from that. They will not budge an inch from that. That's why it's very hard to teach them. It's very hard to teach the people Tawheed. It's very hard to teach them the Sunnah. Because... They were raised like that. And they think and they're self-amazed by themselves. They're self-amazed. They think that they are upon the truth. And we are upon unbabil. We are upon falsehood. And that's why it's, it's very hard for them to accept. And their leaders, they will share a big, they will have a big amount of sin. Because they misled them. They misled them. And they brainwash them. Don't listen to these people. They're extreme. They're this, that, that. And they turn the people away from them. They turn the people away from those who are upon the truth. The Sheikh, he said, he said that they would also call him Hashawi. Hashawi, this word comes from Hashu, which means something that, that, that has no benefit could be derived, that no benefit could be derived from it. And hashu speech means speech in which there is no benefit. Subhanallah. They also call them such names as superficial. Na'udhu billah min dalik. They call them backward. They call them inorganic. And so on. There, there are so many names that they use. They have so many names. But these names do not harm the people of the truth. The people of Nuh said, وَمَا نَرَكَ اتَّبَعَكَ إِلَى الَّذِينَ هُمْ أَرَاذِلُنَا بَادِيَ الرَّعِي This is what the people of Nuh said to Nuh and, and those who were with him. And we do not see anyone following you, means O Nuh, except the lowest amongst us. And they followed you without thinking. Look at this. Look at this. Meaning they were they did, they, they did not have any reason. They didn't have, it means they were, they, were, they were just naive. They were just naive. They followed you. Right? They're just naive. They did not have any reason. They followed you without thinking clearly. As for the intellectuals and those who have composure, they did not follow you. So this is their, this is their claim. This is their claim. And that's exactly what's, what's going on now. They do the same thing with the ulama. They try as much as they can to turn the people away from the scholars. They would say, for, for example, about Sheikh Ben Baz, Sheikh Utaymin, Sheikh Salih Fouzan, scholars like that. They would say, these are scholars of dollars. These are scholars of dollars. And these are the scholars of the government. That's what they call them. They accuse the scholars of being scholars of dollars. This is a very serious accusation. When you call a scholar... And you tell him that this scholar is just after the money. He's just after the money. He doesn't fear Allah. So, and he is like, they call them their slave, the slave of the government. The slave of the government. And also they call them, they are scholars of al hayd wa nifas That's what they call them. They're scholars of al hayd wa nifas Means that all they know is about al hayd Like the menstrual cycle. And the postpartum bleeding and the, the issues have to do with purification. That's all they know. They accuse the scholars of this. And this is, this is a very nasty accusation. When they speak about, about the, the heirs of the Prophet, peace be upon them. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, he said in the hadith, Al-ulama' waratatul anbiya. Al-ulama' waratatul anbiya. The scholars are the heirs of the Prophet, peace be upon them. And he said, 
وإن وإن الأنبياء لم يورثوا دينارا ولا درهما ولكن ورثوا العلم فمن أخذ به أخذ بحظ وافر he says صلى الله عليه وسلم and indeed the prophets the prophet messengers they did not leave anything in terms of inheritance they did not leave any currency they didn't leave any dirham or dinar any currency but they left knowledge so whoever took it he took a great deal of good. And now you speak ill about the ulama. You speak ill about the ulama. And this is very dangerous. You know why? Because when you speak ill about the ulama, the senior scholars, like the like of Sheikh bin Baz, Sheikh Utaymin, Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan, Sheikh Salih al-Luhidan, Imam al-Albani, Sheikh Rabi' and other, other scholars, Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabiri and others, when, when you speak ill about them and you turn the people away, you have committed one of the worst crimes. Because now you're turning the people away from the truth that the scholars have with them. That the scholars have with them. And instead of the scholars, uh, instead of those individuals that you have misguided and misled, instead of asking the, the, the right scholars, they go and ask someone like them, who are emotionally driven, and they have taken them as heads, and they are ignorant. And they go and ask them in the, in the, in the, in the affairs of the religion. And they, 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 they mislead them, and they misguide them. You see how dangerous this affair is when you, 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 uh, you brainwash the people. And you say, no, don't, 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 don't listen to them. These Salafis, they're extreme. This, they are this, they are that, they're Wahhabi. They're this, they're that. All type of names that they, can, they, they, that they can give. But you know what? We say in the Arab world, مَا ما السحابة نباح الكلابي ما السحابة نباح الكلابي Meaning that the clouds, they will not be affected by the barking of the dogs. The clouds, they will not be affected by the barking of the dogs. It's not going to do anything. It's like a, a small child throwing a stone in a gigantic ocean. What that stone's going to do in a, in, a, in a gigantic ocean? Nothing. So likewise, these individuals, we tell them that you can bark as much as you want, but there is nothing you can do because this affair is in the hand of Allah. It's not in, in, in your hand. Look, Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, didn't they speak ill about him? And they're still speaking about him? Look, subhanallah, at his three ties, at his legacy that he, he left behind. Scholars are still, you know, learning and teaching from these three ties. Like us, we're teaching from his three ties, Masail al Jahiliya. And you find many of the scholars, they are doing shuruh, ex explanation, and commentary on them. As Sheikh Salih bin Fuzan al Fuzan. And other scholars, they're doing, you know, seminars and lectures about these type of classes, these type of beneficial treatise of the Shaykh, rahimahullah. Likewise, Al-Imam Al-Albani, let them say what they want. They said he was a Jew. They said things about him, Yeah, all kind of evil they said about the Shaykh. And look at his legacy. Look at his books. All over the world, people benefit from the checking of the Sheikh that this hadith has been authenticated by Sheikh Nasr Din al Albani. From their fruits, you will know them. By their fruits, you will know them. What have these uh, evil and haters have accomplished? Nothing. By their fruits, you will know them. Likewise, Sheikh Rabi'a. This, they speak ill about Sheikh Rabi'a, Hafidahullah Ta'ala. And look, why? Because they're fanatic to their figurehead. When Sheikh Rabi'a refuted their figurehead, they couldn't take it. They could not take it. They started saying things, horrible things about the Sheikh. Sheikh is patient, alhamdulillah. He's patient. He's firm like a mountain, alhamdulillah. And why? Because this is all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's doing all this to protect the youth, the Muslim youth, from deviation. He's, he's, he's doing all this to protect the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the deviation. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all ilm al-nafi' 
العمل الصالح الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين